In this video, I'm going to answer the questions, when is the right time to roll out a covered call option, and how exactly should you roll it out? The answers to these questions will enable you to consistently put cash into your account every single month using covered call options. I'm Randy Perez. I'm a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of this community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click that subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other to become more knowledgeable and profitable. In this video, I'm going to show you the simple process I go through to decide when is the right time to roll out a covered call option. Then I'm going to show you exactly how I roll out covered call options using real life trading examples. By the end of this video, you will know when and how to roll your covered call option positions. What is your favorite option trading strategy? Is it covered calls, naked puts, spreads, or is it something else? In the comments below, let me know what your favorite option trading strategy is and stay tuned until the end of this video where I will show you a quick and easy way that you can use to see how much time value you have left in your covered call option positions, which will help you make a decision on when is the right time to roll out your covered call options. Doing covered call option spreads and dividend stocks is my second most favorite way of using options to generate monthly cash flow. One of the reasons why I like it so much is that on top of the option premium you receive by selling covered call options, you also receiving dividends along the way. I'm going to share with you two of my real life positions that I'm in right now to help you see how I determine when is the right time to roll out a covered call option and exactly how you go about doing that. Here you see one of the positions I'm in right now in the CME group. CME owns a monopoly in the derivatives products business, and yes, that includes options, which is what this video is about today. Let me show you the history of my trades in CME. As you can see here in the blue rectangle, I've been selling put options in CME since June 17th. We actually have collected quite a bit of put option premium before the stock was put into our account on November 20th. As you can see in the red rectangle, for selling the November $175 put options, we were paid $9.48 per share. Those were the put options that were actually assigned to us. They were assigned to us, as you can see at the very bottom of the screen on November 20th. As soon as they were assigned to us, we immediately began to sell covered call options against CME, as you can see in the black rectangle. Those options expire on January 15th. For those covered call options, we received $2.30 per share. Notice what's happened since that time. Almost immediately, CME took off, reaching a high of $185 per share last week. I actually don't want CME to be caught away from me. Yes, if it gets caught away from me, then I get to keep the entire covered call option premium. But the reason why I'm hoping that it will not be caught away from me is that as you can see on the screen, CME went X dividend last week on the 9th. As you can see on the far right column, since we own the stock on the X dividend date, we'll receive the 85 cents per share for that dividend. 85 cents at 200 shares equals $170 that we will get just in dividends. That's on top of the covered call option premium we received of $2.30 per share back on November 20th. The reason why I went out to January expiration and not December was partly because of that dividend that I just mentioned. The other reason is that CME is known to pay its owners, us the stockholders, a special dividend. So I wanted to line my position up so that we could hopefully benefit from that special dividend. And as I was preparing for this video, I got notice that that special dividend is coming and it goes X dividend on December 24th. This is a very generous dividend as you can see on the screen, it's $2.50 per share. The reason why I'm telling you and showing you all this is because this is the big deciding factor in why I sold the January covered call option. And I'm also watching it closely so that I know when it's the right time to roll this covered call position out. If you trade in dividend stocks like I do, knowing when the stock is going X dividend and if there are any special dividends being paid out, it's an important factor that you can use to determine when to roll your covered call options out. CME has already gone X dividend on that quarterly dividend of 85 cents per share. And on the 24th, it'll go X dividend on the $2.50 special dividend. If this option is still at around the same value of $7.85 as you can see here, then most likely the stock would not be called away from me. So I'll be able to receive that special dividend. 
Because of this, I'm keeping a close eye on how much extrinsic value or time value premium is left in this option. So when should I roll this call option? Well, if I want to keep this position CME, then I need to make sure I roll this covered call option if the extrinsic value or time value of this option is less than the dividend that I will receive. That's an important factor in a dividend paying stock. Well, what if the stock is, is not a dividend paying stock or it's not about to go X dividend? When should you roll your covered call options? Here you see another position that I'm currently in. It's the famous insurance company Aflac made famous by their duck mascot and it's ticker symbol AFL. As you can see, I currently own 100 shares of Aflac and I sold one contract or 100 shares worth of the January 15th $40 covered call options. Here you see all the trades I've done in Aflac over the past several months. As you can see in the blue rectangle, I began selling put options in Aflac on June the 8th. It almost immediately went in the money for the $40 put option I sold, but I was able to do one roll where I bought to close the July $40 put option on July 7th and sold to open the August $40 put option. There in the red rectangle, you see that 100 shares of Aflac were assigned to me on August 21st at the $40 strike price. In the black rectangle, you see that I immediately started selling covered call options against the 100 shares I owned. In the first line at the black rectangle, you see that on the same day I was assigned the 100 shares of Aflac, August 21st, I sold the November $40 cover call option and received a dollar per share for that. Aflac then proceeded to go up and I bought that call option back for $2.94 on November 16th and sold the January $40 call option for $3.77. So I rolled this option out two months. The reason is that as you can see at the very bottom line, Aflac went X dividend in November. So I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of option premium left in that covered call option so the option would not be called away from me if someone wanted to try and capture that dividend. The question now is, what should I do with this covered call option? As you can see here, Aflac is currently trading right at $45 per share. So the covered call option I sold is 12.5% in the money. So what should we do with this call option? As of right now, this option still has some time value left in it. As you can see, Aflac is trading right at $44.99, and this short call option is worth right at $5.22 per share. So by doing some quick math, we see that there's about 23 cents per share of time value premium left in this option. I'm okay leaving that option where it is for now. I looked at the possibility of rolling it out to February. After buying the January option back for $5.22 and rolling it out, it would give us about 53 cents per share. That's actually a decent return. That equates to a 13.8% annualized cash on cash return. As you can see, Aflac actually goes X dividend on February 16th or three days before option expiration. If you add in that dividend, it gives us an annualized return of 22.4%. I like that return. But I think I'm gonna hold off for now on rolling this position and here's why. We still have 33 days left until option expiration. So I still have some time to chip away at this time value premium that's left in this January covered call option. Also, if you look here at the daily chart on the left in the white box, you see that Aflac has kind of been going sideways now for about two weeks. I see the same thing in the weekly chart on the right in the white box. But I definitely want to keep an eye on this because as you can see in the yellow box on the bottom on both the daily and the weekly chart, the green bars represent the up days, Predominantly over the past several weeks, the green up days volume is a lot higher and more frequent than the red volume or down days. This tells us that there's a lot of pressure on the buy side. As such, I would expect Aflac to go up in price. But for now, it looks like it's taking a breather. It's kind of like a sprinter in a race. Aflac sprinted from $33 per share up to $45 per share. And it's now taking a bit of a breather. And I expect that it'll probably try to retrace back down to the green 50 moving average on the daily chart and on the weekly chart to around the red 200 moving average, which are both right around $41 and $42 in those price areas. If that happens in the next several weeks, then at that point, I'll probably look to roll this call option out. The other reason I wanna to wait to see if that happens is because if Aflac does come down some, there'll be more extrinsic value or time value premium in that call option that we're selling because it'll be closer to the strike price. I like to capture that dividend on February 16th because it will add to our return. So that'll be my goal, to try and roll this covered call option out for a solid return, but also try and hold on to the stock long enough to get that dividend. If you'd like information on how I go about rolling covered call options that are out of the money, at the money, and even deep in the money, 
Check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled How to Roll Over Covered Call Options once you're finished with this video. Next, we're going to talk about a position I'm in right now that in my opinion is just not worth rolling the call option out and what I want to do about it. But if you're liking the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will share with you a quick and easy technique you can use to keep track of the time value or extrinsic premium that's left in the covered haul options you have sold, which will help you decide when is the right time to roll your covered call options. Here you see the position that I'm in right now in one of my favorite companies right now, and that's AbbVie, ticker symbol ABBV. As you can see, I currently own 300 shares of AbbVie, and I've sold three contracts or 300 shares worth of the January 15th, $77.5 covered call options. Here on the chart, you see that the challenge with this position is that it's absolutely gone wild over the past month and a half. It's gone from around $79 per share to where it's at now $108 per share. Let's see how much time value we have left in this covered call option to help us decide if we should roll it out now or wait. Currently, AbbVie is trading at $107.50. That means that the July $77.5 call option is exactly $30 in the money. The market value of that call option is supposedly $29.57, as you can see in the red box. We, of course, know that that's off because it's at least worth the $30 that it's in the money. So there's really no time value left in this option. That doesn't get us very excited at all. So what should we do with this option? Is it the right time to roll this call option? Let's take a look at how much we could get if we bought the January covered call option back and sold the February covered call option at the same strike price. As you can see here in the red rectangle, the ask and bid on the January call option is $28.35 and $29.5. If you look down towards the bottom of the blue rectangle, by going out one whole month to February 18th, the ask and the bid is pretty much the same as in January. It's $28.45 or $0.10 cents more than the bid on the January covered call option, and the ask is actually less than the ask on the January call option. So basically, we get nothing for rolling this call option out one whole month. Is this the right time to roll this call option? The answer is no. If AbbVie doesn't come down in price, which will cause the extrinsic value of the February call option to increase, then we will let this stock be called away from us. There just isn't enough return in this position anymore to roll this call option. If it gets called away from us, then we'll use that capital to enter a brand new position in a brand new stock. If you'd like to see how we find new option trading opportunities and use selling put options to enter covered call positions, check out the video in the link above and the description below entitled, how do you identify option trading opportunities and what are the best stocks for selling put options on when you're finished with this video? At the beginning, I told you that I was going to show you a quick and easy way that you can use to help you see how much time value is left in the covered call options that you've sold, which will help you make a better decision about when is the right time to roll your covered call options. Let me show you the two ways I keep track of how much time value is left in the covered call options I've sold. As you know, once there's not much time value left in a covered call option you've sold, it's time to either roll the covered call option out, or if you can't get enough return, then just let the stock be called away from you. Like I mentioned, I was going to do an AbbVie if it didn't come down in price. The first way that I keep track of how much time value or extrinsic value is left in a covered call option I've sold is by if the covered call option is in the money, like was the case in all three of the current positions I share with you today. Take a look at the corresponding value of the put option. Here you see at the bottom right in the blue rectangle that the AbbVie $77.5 put option is worth in the middle of $0.10 cents and $0.39 cents per share or about $0.24 cents per share. So one quick and easy way that you can keep an eye on how much time value is left in a call option that's in the money is by looking at the corresponding put options value at that same strike price. If it's getting low, then you know it's time to make a decision on whether you will roll that call option out or just let it be called away from you like we plan to do with AbbVie. The other quick and easy way is to set alerts, not only the call option that you're trading, but also the corresponding put option as I just talked through. So you're doing the same thing, but by setting an alert, you don't even have to run those numbers or look at the corresponding put option. You're just checking your account to see if any alerts have popped up. Here you see the alerts I have in place in my interactive broker trading platform for this exact position. As soon as either the $77.5 call or put option reach a value of $0.15 cents per share or less, I'll get an alert. This will remind me that it's time to make a decision on whether I want to roll out this option or just let the stock be called away from me. 
So those are two quick and easy techniques and tips you can use to keep track of how much time value is left in the covered call options as well as the put options that we've sold. Once these short options become nearly worthless, it's time to either roll that call option out or let the stock be called away from us. If you'd like help keeping track of what are the best stocks and options to trade and when is the best time to roll positions out, check out the benefits of becoming a patron at the link in the description below. On a weekly and daily basis, our patrons get alerts of the exact trades we are doing. They also get a list of stocks every weekend that we plan to buy outright or sell options on. We take a lot of the hard work and time out of finding option trading opportunities for our patrons. And a quick shout out and a big thank you to all of our current Patreon members. Thank you for your support. Check out the videos in the link above and the description below where I share with you more of my secret tips and tricks that will help you trade options like a pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.